believe in. Thank God I am free. Free from sin. And you are as well if you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. We welcome you this morning to Midway Baptist Church in Athens, Alabama. I'm Jerome Hilliard, pastor. And we are so glad that you've chose to be a part of our service this morning. I want to welcome our church family, which I trust they are viewing. And also I want to welcome our visitors that I trust are viewing as well. Pray that today's service will be a blessing to you. And uh, I'd like for you to have your Bibles ready to read with me in just a few minutes. And if we'll listen to what the Word of God says, the instruction of God's Word, I know that we will be blessed. Let's go forward in the Word of Prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for this opportunity that we have to be in your house today and to be able to bring forth another teaching another preaching from your word. Father, we pray that in everything that we do today, that we will honor you, that we'll magnify you, that we'll glorify you. We pray that each and every one that is viewing today will receive a blessing from this broadcast. If they're a Christian, I pray that they'll be lifted up, that they'll be encouraged and perhaps even challenged by some of the things that we look at. And for that one that's not a Christian, that one that has never accepted Christ as their Savior, I pray that the Holy Spirit would speak to their heart today. Pray that the Word would go forth and be uh, like that sharp two-edged sword that it is, that it pierced to the divided son of soul and spirit. And Father, that today they'll realize that they need Jesus and that they will accept Him before it's eternally too late. Father, bless these that have come to the sanctuary this morning to make this broadcast possible. I pray your blessing be upon each one of them. Father, just have your way now in each and everything, for it's in Christ's name that we pray and we ask it. Amen. Well, Linda's going to sing for us this morning. She's going to sing a song. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Linda.
Well, I believe we all could say amen to the words of that psalm this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Truly, God has blessed us, has he not? If you have your Bibles, and I hope that you do, turn with me to the book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, and I'm going to read from chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. And this morning, I want to share with you a message entitled, The Triumphant Life. The Triumphant Life. The book of 2 Corinthians is a very interesting book. Some uh, historians, Bible theologians, uh, certainly people that are a lot smarter in the word than I, have said that there's possibly two other letters that Paul had wrote to this church at Corinth. And that those letters, uh, for whatever the reason may be, have been lost. Well, my thoughts on that is this, that, you know, God doesn't lose anything. God knows exactly where things are. And if God had have wanted those two letters to be included as part of this compilation that we call the Bible, the Holy Scriptures, then God would have made those available. But anyway, uh, back to 2 Corinthians. The Apostle Paul is writing to the church at Corinth, which he had a great love for. And in this particular letter, there's uh, several things, there are several issues going on, but a couple of the major ones are this. In the first letter that Paul wrote to the Corinthian church, Paul was addressing the church in that they needed to take some pretty strict matters as it dealt with members in the church that were bringing reproach and were bringing criticism upon the church. So Paul wrote to them about a particular individual and Paul told them that they needed to take action with this individual. In uh, 2 Corinthians, Paul is writing back to the church and he is, in essence, thanking them for the action that they have taken. But another major thrust of 2 Corinthians is that Paul is now having to defend his, apost his apostleship to some of the church. Seems as though there had been a multitude of false teachers uh, come into the church and they had said in essence that if Paul were, really was an apostle of Jesus Christ then certainly he would not have had to go through all of the bad things that have happened to him in his life. So in 2 Corinthians Paul uh, he justifies himself. He holds up the credentials uh, that uh, prove that he is an apostle of Jesus Christ. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, Paul is talking about how that he had forgave the man just as they had forgave the man. And then all of a sudden, Paul makes a shift in what he is discussing, what he's writing about. And this shift occurs starting in verse 14. And we're going to start our reading right there. But let me say this. In, in this... In this uh, shift that Paul makes, uh, he is going to really give instruction to the child of God, to the Christian, in how that they can live a life triumphantly. And so uh, Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, changes the path that he's going in this scripture. He later comes back to his original thought. But for a short while, he talks to the Christian about living life triumphantly. And that's what I want us to look at this morning. The title of the message is Living a Triumphant Life. Let's read what Paul says about this, starting in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. I'm going to pause just for a moment. Think about what Paul just said to those Christian people. He says, thanks to God 
Who sometimes? No. Who part-time? No. Who always leads us in triumph in Christ. As the old saying goes, that, that's enough to make a child of God when they really grasp it, have the hair on the back of their neck stand up a little bit. Or as an old preacher friend of mine used to say a long time ago, if that don't make you shout, then your wood is wet. Let's read on. And through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the one we are the aroma of death leading to death and to the other the aroma of life leading to life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not, as so many peddling the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as from God, we speak in the sight of God in Christ. Let's pray. Father, for the next few minutes, I pray that you would lead God and direct our thoughts. I pray that this message that we share today will speak to our hearts. Lord, that it will be of encouragement to the child of God. Father, that it will bring about conviction to that one that is not a child of God. Do give the recall of this message. Do give the recall of your word and the leadership of both that in everything that is said and done, you'll be magnified, glorified, and honored. For it's in Christ's name I pray, amen. As I thought about this message, I had some thoughts. I said, when we speak of living, living a triumphal life, just what do we mean? The scripture said, now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. Well, what is he leading us in triumph in Christ all about? Well, I jotted down a few things that came to my heart, came to my mind. And perhaps you can even add more to this. But here, here is just uh, uh, five things that came to my mind about what it is that I need to be in triumph about. One, living life according to the word of God. Living life according to the word of God. Two, naturally this means being a Christian. Naturally, I'll say it again, this means being a Christian through the only way to become a Christian and that is by belief and acceptance of Jesus Christ. Three, trusting God in all issues of life. Do you ever have any issues with that? <clears throat> you ever have, <clears throat> excuse me, any problems with that? I think if we were honest, I believe we'd all say I, I, I do. Number four, being a positive Christian influence on the lives of other people. <clears throat> Being a positive Christian influence on the lives of other people. Now, I know that some of you as, as me, if not most of you as me, you have people that are very dear to your heart. Family members that are very dear to you. And <clears throat> as I have thought about my family, I've said, I want to make sure that I've been the right kind of influence on I want to be a Christian influence upon them. Number five, being an ambassador for Christ in this world. Being an ambassador for Christ in this world. And I'm sure I had a number six, but my number six was this. I'm sure the list could go on and on, and you could probably add more to it, as I said a moment ago, but... You know, those are five very important things, I believe, for every Christian person. And I believe it's in those things that we should strive for triumph. We should strive for victory. The question then arises, how do we achieve success in those areas? How do we achieve a triumphant uh, 
victory in these matters. Well, I believe that 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 4, 7, 14 through 17, which we have read, gives us some insight in how to be triumphant in our lives. And before we examine those things, there's one other reason that I want to be triumphant in life. And it's found in Matthew chapter 25, verse 21. I want to hear my Lord say, as he said in this parable, his Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. I want to hear those words. So, as we look at this passage of scripture, we can find the recipe, we can find the ingredients for living this triumphant life. Now, just because we're Christians, just because we are Christians does not mean that in every situation we will view ourselves as being victorious. There are times, many times I'm afraid, when it seems as though we have failed or at least feel like we haven't accomplished the goal that was ahead of us. You ever felt that way? I have many times, many times. So what are these ingredients that the Apostle Paul of the inspiration of the Holy Spirit shares with us to help us understand how to have this triumph in Christ? Well, before I get to those things, let me just add a little, a little more insight into this uh, way that Paul explains how to have this triumphancy. I was not aware of this until I started preparing for this message, but uh, I found that uh, the symbolism that Paul uses in describing the triumphancy in the Christian life is much like what the Roman citizens in Rome would experience when a Roman general came back to Rome after a victorious conquest. When the Roman general would come back into Rome, it would be a great procession. Leading the way would be those who had been captured that were eventually going to be released and they would become Roman citizens. And then there would be the general and his troops and all mixed in with all of this would be the burning of incense, sweet-smelling fragrances. And then back behind the general and I suppose behind some of the soldiers would come a group of people who were destined to be executed. These that were out in front would be smelling this sweet aroma and they would know that they were going to be released. These in the back would be smelling the sweet aroma and they would know that their lives were short. And they say that these processions sometimes would go on for a full day. He would, the general would bring with him a lot of the different things that he had, he had uh, captured and took from the enemies of the Roman Empire. And that's sort of the symbolism that Paul uses. Notice again, verse 14. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of of his knowledge in every place. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved, remember, the front, and among those who are perishing, those in the rear. So the symbolism is much like that of a Roman general coming in victorious. Let's look and see what it is that we must do to claim to have appropriated to us this triumph in Christ. 
to do all of those things that I previously mentioned that I would like for my life to reflect. What, what is it that I must do? Verse 14. It says, thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. I want you to notice the two words in Christ. In Christ. My friend, there is no way that any person could achieve those five things that I mentioned previously that would be a def definition or would be a picture, word picture, if you will, of what it means to be living triumphantly. There is no way that can be accomplished unless, first of all, I am in Christ. I am in Christ. I have, I have been convicted. I have repented. I have confessed. I have accepted. I have put my faith and trust in what Jesus Christ came to this world to do and what Jesus Christ did in this world and what Jesus Christ is going to do even after this very day. I must, you must be in Christ. And to, and to be in Christ is to be at one with him. To be in Christ is to be entirely yielded to his will. To be in Christ is to have his will done in us. I, I'm often reminded of a little story I read about many years ago, supposedly a true story. I read about it of just a, I guess you might say, a mental picture of what it means to be in Christ and Christ to be in you. It was a young boy. Uh, I guess somewhere around the age of eight, nine, or ten years old, had been attending either vacation Bible school or Sunday school and, and had heard this about Jesus Christ, about him being the Son of God, and that he came to this world and that he died on a cross for all of those that would uh, accept him to be saved forever and ever in heaven to be their home. And the little boy, he wanted that. He came under conviction. His mother noticed uh, his strange behavior and his mother decided to talk to him. And, and he opened up to his mother and he said to his mother, Mama, they tell me at church that in order for me to be saved, in order for me to know that I'm going to heaven when I die, in order for me to be a child of God, I've got to let Jesus come into me. And she said, son, that's right. He said, mama, mama, I can't do that. If he comes into me, he's going to stick out all over me for he's so big and I'm so little. How true his words were. Jesus needs to stick out all over us. Us in him and him in us. We must be in Christ. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 says, Listen to Paul writing to the church at Galatia. He says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Ingredient number one, our lives must be in Christ. <coughs> Number two, verse 14 again. Listen to this. Verse 14, now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. And through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge. His knowledge. If we want to be triumphant in life. We've got to be in Christ. Christ has got to be in us. If we want to be triumphant in life, our lives must reveal the wisdom of God. It must reveal the wisdom of God. The Bible says this and in, in the King James Version, it says, and maketh manifest the savor of, the, of his knowledge by us in every place. 
The Holman Christian Standard Version renders this, and through us spreads the aroma of the knowledge of him in every place. New King James says the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Well, how do we diffuse that it spread the fragrance of his knowledge in every place if we don't have his knowledge, if we don't have his wisdom? So number two is <coughs> excuse me, our lives must reveal the wisdom of God. The guiding principle in the Christian life is the truth revealed in God's word. Let me say that again. The guiding principle in the Christian life is the truth revealed in his word. You remember one of the things that I said, you know, I believe being triumphant in life consists of, <coughs> excuse me, was being a positive Christian influence on the lives of other people. I want you to look at 2 Corinthians 4. We'll look at a couple of verses of scripture. 2 Corinthians 4, starting to read verse 2. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation, that's revealing, of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Listen now. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. King James says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. My friend, if we are going to be a positive Christian influence, then we are going to have to reveal, manifest God's wisdom to those that come in contact with us. We're going to have to do that. Those led by the Spirit of God will surely be witnesses to something higher and nobler than the wisdom of this world. Then the question arises, <clears throat> how can we reveal the wisdom imparted to us by the word if by the word we are not instructed? How can we reveal the wisdom imparted to us by the word if the word is not instructing us? Number three, Look at verse 15. For we are called, for we are to God the fragrance of Christ. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. We are the fragrance of Christ. To God. In other words, we are supposed to be representatives. We are supposed to be emulating our Lord Jesus Christ. For that is the way that God sees us. For to God we are the fragrance of Christ. Ephesians 5 2 says, And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us. Have you ever encountered people that were professors of uh, knowing Christ as their Savior, which I am not their judge. God is their judge. But they're professors of Christianity, professors of Jesus Christ living within them, but yet they are the most hateful. They are the most uh, lewdist. They are some of the people that you just don't want to be around. You know, that's not a sweet fragrance of Jesus Christ to be like that. For the Bible teaches us that he is love. Jesus is love. And we are to walk in love as Christ also loved us 
and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior or aroma. Christ is, was the epitome of love. He gave himself. He was a living, walking sacrifice to God. Our lives, your life, my life, must also be as he was, to be triumphant. Number four, verse 15 again. Our lives must affect others. Notice that verse 15 said, we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. Our life is a fragrance, an aroma to those that are saved, but also to those that are not saved. In other words, they see, they detect within us the embodiment the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, we are that representative. We are that fragrance to God. And we are to lost people also the fragrance of God, of Jesus Christ. We are to be that. Then, number five, look at verse 17. For we are not as so many peddling the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as from God, we speak in the sight of God in Christ. Our life must be true to the word of God. Our life must be true to the word of God. For we are not as so many peddling the word of God, but of as of sincerity and as of from God, we speak in the sight of God in Christ. Our lives must be true to the word of God. Our lives must not corrupt the word of God, be in conflict with it. If the heart is not true to God, the life will not be true to God. If the heart is not true to God, the life will not be true to the word of God. I'm amused, I'm amused, wrong choice of words. I'm saddened to see folks who profess Christianity, they, they reveal themselves at certain times of a week as if they are worshiping the Lord, as if they are thankful to the Lord for what the Lord has done. But then after that time passes by, their life has no reflection of the word of God. Their life has no reflection of the emulation of Jesus Christ. It's as if they are emulating the world. My friend, our lives, our lives cannot emulate the world and give us a triumphant life. It can't do it. Colossians 2.8 says this. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of man, of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. It is easy to corrupt God's message by mingling it with Christ dishonoring philosophies and traditions of men. So if I want my life to be triumphant, then I must be true to the word of God. It must reflect in my actions. It must reflect in my relationships. It must reflect in my character. It must reflect in my integrity. And number six, verse 17. We speak in the sight of God in Christ. Our lives must be lived in the presence of God at all times. 
You know, the truth of the matter is, is that God sees everything about us. We hide nothing from God. We may hide things from people that we love. We may hide things from people that we work with. We may hide things from people we go to school with. We may hide things from our friends, from our neighbors. We may think nobody knows, but there's one thing for sure. God knows. God knows. If I'm going to have the triumph of life in Christ, if you're going to have the triumph of life in Christ, then abiding in Christ and practicing the presence of God in our daily life is the evidence of living life in a triumphant way. Here's what the scripture says. Listen to these verses and see if it doesn't support what I just said, that our lives must be lived in the presence of God at all times. Jesus spoke these words in John 15, 7. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. 2 Corinthians 3, 5. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. We can't do it. God can do it through us. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me just summarize these ingredients that will allow us to be led in the triumph in Christ. One, our lives must be in Christ. Number two, our lives must reveal the wisdom of God. Number three, our lives must emulate the life of Christ. Number four, our lives must affect others. Number five, our lives must be true to the word of God. And number six, our lives must be lived as in the presence of God at all times. You want to be triumphant in life? Then be in Christ, receive the word of Christ, and do the word of Christ. May we pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning for the opportunity to share a message from your word. I pray that something's been said this morning, Lord, that has struck a chord within the heart of uh, those that have been viewing and the few that are with us in the sanctuary this morning. Lord, I I. I know that we all have a desire, those of us that are Christians, we have a desire to hear those words, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Lord, we can, <clears throat> we can live our lives in triumph here on this side of the grave, on this side of eternity, by following the direction of your word. I just pray that you help us to grasp these truths and to practice these truths that we might live that triumphant life. Lord, I pray for the person that's not saved. I pray that today they would accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Lead us, guide us, and direct us, Father. In Jesus' name I pray and I ask it. Amen. Well, I want to thank you for joining with us today uh, in our Sunday morning broadcast. And uh, I pray that you'll be with us again next Sunday. Uh, let me uh, mention also to you that uh, we have a website, uh, and I believe you can find it uh, narrated in the introduction to our service. We have a website. We have uh, a YouTube channel. And on the website, on the YouTube channel, you can also find uh, our Sunday morning broadcast. You can also find the adult Sunday school lesson that is broadcast every, every week. Also, uh, there is a Bible study being conducted in the book of Colossians by Brother Dr. Overholt. You can find it on our YouTube channel as well. 
and also our youth and our children uh, directors, they also have online activities as well for those groups, the children and the youth. Let me invite you to uh, join in on some of these things. If, uh, if you have the time, which I believe if you're like us, you're cooped up at home, you'll probably have a little time that you can do this. If you want to get in touch with us, I believe our, web, our email, is, email address is published on our introduction to uh, the broadcast. Feel free to get in touch with us that way. God bless you. We thank you for being a part of the service today. And uh, Lord willing, we'll see you again next Sunday. Goodbye.